Hey, Louie. Trump loved what you did at the comedy club. So terrific. Nobody knew what was happening until you were standing right in front of them spewing out your material. Classic Louie. Well, thank you, sir. I... You didn't ask anyone if they wanted to see it. You gave them no choice but to watch you work it. Beautiful. I just went there to do some jokes. They were good jokes. Now people are like, oh, oh, too soon. I haven't been on stage forever. You should have talked about the elephant in the room, though. Okay? Start off with something like, hey, I just flew in from California, and boy, are my arms tired from jacking off in the airplane the whole time. It was terrific. <laughs> Everybody was trapped in there, forced to watch me. Best play of my life. No, no way. Are you crazy? I'm not doing that joke. Okay, I gotta go, okay? Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Louis C.K., you're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, man. All right, guys, I am Tyler Valentine, and I am on the weekly relapse hosted by your boy, Skylar Potter. High energy. Work High out. energy. You are listening to the weekly relapse with your host, Skylar, Skylar Potter. Potter. The day is done. The day is done. The day is done. going on junkies what if i just left it at that like i just started the podcast. Right. <laughs> just like, what uh, up, thank drug you for, addicts yeah thank you for tuning in what's up my pill poppers my fucking arm bangers what's going on over here <laughs> uh, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the weekly relapse tyler valentine what's up dude what's up broham chilling chilling man we've been doing comedy all over the place and shit you've been having a good week i haven't talked to you in a couple of days yeah it's been a dude work one work, of those work 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 i feel you man i'm just i'm still trying to get this like my apologies by the way for any every, all my listeners man i know i haven't put something out other than the one with brett rabel yesterday which uh, was I, great if you haven't listened to it um i haven't put anything out because uh i haven't had internet man and i've been using the little bit of hot spot that i do have to to make sure the bomb city talk podcast gets out because it's not just mine, like you know what I mean. Yeah, there's yeah. some, there's other people involved in that one, oh, yeah, so yeah. It, 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 like, I feel bad if my studio doesn't work, so like their podcast can't go out. So I've been doing that, man. It's been going like my internet should be back on, everything like that. The studio will be back up to a hundred percent, hopefully tomorrow. So. Yeah, yeah. Internet providers are kind of like that. They're like the drug dealer that always falls asleep, and yeah. you're supposed to be at your house like three hours ago. He's like, oh my bad, bro. Well, like, I yeah, I, I, I feel bad. I got into it with a. Uh, the fucking sudden leak guy today. Um, well, not the guy. Like, the fucking... On the on the phone. Because, no. like... Dude, okay, whenever, whenever you set up, they're like, what day... We can come on this day. What time works? And we're like, all right. They said Monday. We're like, dope. Monday between, like, four... Or, like, one and five. It's a huge margin. One and five on Monday. We're like, all right, that works. And they're like, all right, cool. Well, it's actually going to be Tuesday between four and six. We're like, fuck it. You know what? I'll... I'll I, yeah, can, I can make yeah. that work. And then they text... Or they email us today... It's actually going to be like Wednesday or Thursday. I was like, no, nah, fuck that, dude. Like, like, how is it so hard for me to get the internet? I'm try- like, First off, I'm going to give you money. Right. Like, you get money whenever. And, like, it's it's weird. As soon as you bitch at them, you get the day that they promised you. Yeah. But, like, if you're nice about it, they'll just push you back for a week, dude. Yeah, you know, the, the weird thing is, who is it? Is it is it Google or is it Facebook? They got, like, the drones they're testing out to like give free internet to like third world countries, so, like and, and that's just ridiculous. Yeah, that's what me. they need, dude. They need to make sure their Apple devices are working. Yeah. Not, they don't need food or anything. Fuck food. Yeah, fuck food, dude. But you hey, me? You it's, gotta, it's you... called an Apple, bro. <laughs> it's called an Apple. Yeah, it's, it's an Fucking Apple. deal with it. Yeah, build it and then try to buy it. Whatever. But like the that's the weird thing for me is that like you're in the middle of like basically like internet. Land, which is the United States, but somebody in Zimbabwe is getting better internet than you, and you got to wait four days to get it, and they're getting it for free. It's ridiculous. Well, that and like, I, I just hate internet providers. I'm not dude. saying people they're, in Zimbabwe like, don't deserve internet. They're like, hey, listen, it's only going to be 106 bucks for this badass package. And you're like, dope, hell yeah. And they're like, Sweet. all right, you can pay for it in money order, whatever you want. You're like, cool. And then when I called them to reschedule, like to like make sure they came the day they said they were going to come, 
They're like, all right, well, it's like 116. It's like, how the fuck did it go up ten dollars? Yeah, geez, what are you a mafia boss? Like this is I, bullshit. I swear, like every time you call them, they're like, all right, up is pers- like, uh, add taxes, add, add extra taxes, add that shit on. Yeah, yeah, that guy was a total douche. He had twenty bucks on for what? I don't know. Make something up. Like, Dude, I, I will lose my fucking mind. Like whenever I'm paying, like my internet's paid, and like my games are lagging. It's like. Like, I'll start adding it up. I'm like, I paid this much for my Xbox, this much for my TV. I paid this much a month for internet. I paid this much for the fucking game. That's all this money put into one. Why the fuck is it not working? Like, I will lose my mind, dude. It's, like, unhealthy. I got I to gotta get my anger under control. That's another thing. Since I stopped drinking. Oh, I have, I have the same problem, though. Since I that. stopped drinking as much. Like, I, I don't only drink when we I, perform. I do it now, too. Like, I'll go, like, three or four days with no drinking, and my, like... My meter for bullshit for humanity just drastically drops. Oh, dude, there's none. It's like you're running on fumes. You're like, I swear to the next person that just turns too close in front of me, I'm going to fucking ram him into a wall. I don't even care anymore. I just can't. I, I, like, I, I don't understand the human mentality of like, dude, I, where, I'm not going to say the business name right now because I'm bitching. <laughs> but, the client, like, dude, people will walk up to a door, read two signs that both say cash only. And then they'll walk in like they didn't read it, be like, "Yes, I want to get, I need this." Da 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 da. You ring them up, and then like they hand you the card, and then you're like, "Oh, we're actually cash only." They're like, "Really?" It's like, dude, I watched you read the sign. Yeah. I watched you read both the signs. You pointed at them. You told your boyfriend, like, I don't. Know, and then you waved it off, like, "Ah, we'll just go in and see how it goes." Like, I watched all. Like, I'm yeah. sitting three feet from the fucking door. It's see through. I can see you. Yeah. <laughs> I know the public education system is lacking, but like, you can't get past eight letters. We have a problem. Dude, yeah. Like, I just don't understand some people, man. Like, it's so crazy. And then like, there's days that like, you feel bad for them. You're like, oh, dude, you're so dumb. Like, I, li- I literally feel bad for you. I think the older I get, the less I feel like that now. I'm just like, dude, I hope you get hit, like, by a car. Not, not, not kill you, like, go on 15 and just get a good, like... Knock uh, enough common sense and you something. look both fucking ways. Something. Get, get I mean, something going, Jesus, man. man. Like, oh, fuck, dude. And it's even worse, like, if I'm at work. This is just turn. This is the Bitch Fest podcast. This is the Bitch Fest podcast. Fuck everybody. Yeah, let me tell you something about you that you don't fucking know. <laughs> Do you read signs and then not fucking pay attention to them? Because if so, uh, I, I really appreciate you listening to my podcast and keep doing it, but you, you're, yeah. you're the worst. This is our PSA. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of w- uh, which, I'll, I, I got some exciting stuff to break out during the podcast. But uh, before we get into all that, so we've been doing, like we said, a lot of shows lately, man. Yeah, You've been yeah. fucking crushing it. Thanks, man. I think I'm starting to – I think I'm maturing as a comic each setup, like stand-up. Like, I uh, – dude, that last one at Tease, I felt like I really found a good groove and I just stuck with it, you know? Like, I found – like, that was – like, and I, ha- I have those at Latchwoods, but Tease the other night, I just felt like – you ever get into, and you know that like you just feel like you just slid oh, into a perfect set and you're like yeah. oh dude and whenever that- you're whenever you're saying your jokes differently than you normally would yeah and they're fucking crushing like it's like you've been you've been trying to say them this way the whole time and it just you never had the right rhythm yeah it's like yeah like you get into like a rhythmic just fucking bam like the uh, um, there's a term from like uh, it's a gypsy term actually uh, it's called duande and it's when you reach like basically your peak creative point and i felt like i was i kind of slid into that moment like my jokes were like i really wasn't even thinking about them i was just more like just kind of like flowing dude you know? uh everyone did great um I, I i unfortunately it was my fault the way everything happened i just whenever like i see a comic buddy man i want to, i want everybody to go on stage i like yeah. i love seeing my friends do comedy you know what yeah I mean? but so, you also catch the back end of that shit too well like oh i added two more people to the show yeah that was I mean? that was kind so of my fault it went from Sorry. five no no it's not your fault because like i wanted i honestly to be to be 100 percent honest i wasn't even sure who was all part of the show yeah if i saw a comic i just assumed they were part of the show word and i was like cool we're doing this you yeah. know what i mean so it went from <laughs> five to seven comics real fast yeah and then um yeah i just i, I went up there every, 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 you know people were drunk it was just a weird crowd man like one of the there's a lady uh, this guy was sitting with, and I like looked at him. I was like, "Hey, can you ask him to just dial it down just a little bit?" You know, and that offended him. You know what I mean? And then like uh, by the time I was on stage, dude, the, there's just two really fucking loud tables. Yeah, that were just talking over. Like I couldn't even hear myself on stage. Yeah, and I was sitting in the the table like right in front of the stage, and I could barely hear you. And like, dude, it got so loud. In like there. I got irritated as fuck. Like I kept giving him like the death stare. Like. <laughs> 
I well, may slash your tires if you don't shut the hell up. And <laughs> it was, dude, and like that was like I think I even mentioned it on stage. I was like the loudest fucking people in this bar. I know the name of. Like I know you. Yeah, what like, are you doing? Like I see you. You're making this so much harder on me than it needs to be. You know what I mean? Like if I was like a like if I was a painter, that'd be like you're standing there watching someone paint a mural and just fucking slapping their elbow the whole time. Yeah, you're just like, oh, that's a good. And shade then you're like, like and then you're like, hey, buddy. It's coming out great. You did great. It's like, dude, you fucking... Yeah, yeah, I pulled it together. It looks like a painting. Yeah. It looks like a person. That's what I was going for. It's not the person I was trying to fucking yeah. paint. <laughs> yeah, you made that really hard. <laughs> like, you turned this painting of a beautiful woman I was trying into, and like, fucking Don Knox. Thanks. Like, I appreciate it. It wasn't supposed to be a zombie. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. I wasn't going for, like, a Van Gogh, Picasso type thing. No, I was, I was trying to do realism. Yeah, like, <laughs> like straight for no avant-garde, you know? But yeah, uh, I, I'm 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 excited by uh, how many people came out to the show. I was very impressed. I apologize to that heckler that I was too mean to on the last episode, and I'll do it again, man. She didn't deserve that. If she ever ends up coming to a show, like I said, I got your ticket. Yeah, yeah. You you very, yeah. No, that you beat yourself up over that one for a minute. Yeah, that was bad. I didn't. She didn't deserve that. She didn't deserve that. <laughs> she did the week before. No, oh, yeah, she was but not that day. Cackling like a banshee in the darkness, you know. No, 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 no. She like that. That's what like that was like the meanest part was like I took her laugh, and then like used it and like I'm like, clearly my joke worked. You yeah. were enjoying it. Yeah. Let me just be mean to you for no reason, yeah. dude. It Thanks was... for supporting me. Go fuck yourself. Like, oh, so uh, oh, that video by the way that I showed at the beginning was Kyle uh, Kyle Dunnigan. He does so, those face mask videos, him and Louis, like him doing Louis C.K. He does such a Dude, good. Dude, no great accent. I thought it was Louis for like the first like five seconds. I was like, oh, I'm that's doing a face that holder. joke. I was like, did somebody let Louis back on the internet? When the fuck did this well, dude, happen? Uh, he's back on stage, man. Is he? Yeah, he's back on stage. He went to the Ice House and just showed up and did a surprise set. It was good. I wasn't there. Uh, oh yeah, well, I didn't know if you'd seen about on the me. Internet, I yeah. went to New, New York that day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know if somebody had like posted because like with that you'd figure there'd be like five hundred YouTube posts on there. Probably. Well, I don't, I don't think you're allowed that, to film in comedy clubs. But like, and it's funny because everyone's all like, "Oh, Louis C.K. I can't believe." It. I was like, "Dude, he said that shit in a set." Like, like, <laughs> and I hate to see like a, like and Louis not one of my favorite comics, but I respect him because like he's good at what he does. Um, I don't know. That's a very unpopular opinion. Sometimes amongst some of my comic friends are like, how do you not really like Louis C.K.? I'm like, it's just not my style, you know? I, I, I enjoy him. There's definitely some jokes that he has that fucking made me fucking laugh so hard. Oh man. yeah. No, like the, like the one the where deer he's, joke, dude, where he's talking about the deer outside of his house. The oh my God. Deer. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's the one where he's talking about, he smokes weed in that circle in the party. He's like, I'm oh, in yeah. fucking Nebraska. You know, of yeah. course. He's like, and he's like, when he talks about like the wind, he's like, everyone knows, like, I can't handle how the wind is touching my elbow right now. Oh yeah. And, he, and like, and then the thought of like not being able to leave the circle, like that shit was so fun. Like, dude, I was rolling, bro. Because you've but been. But that being there. said, but yeah. that being said, um, I'm not a big Dane Cook fan, but he has a he has a he has bit. A, he that, has a like, couple jokes. Yeah. He has a bit that makes me cry laughing. I think dude. the funny thing is when I was a teenager, oh, I fucking love Dane Cook. But the older I got, I'm like, me. That's because I started getting that's, like I that's started the listening thing. to smarter it's comics. It's not that Dan Cook's a bad comedian in any way. It's no. it's the same way that like I don't listen to that much Gaffigan anymore. Um, it's the same way of like music, dude. Like uh, hot like we all listen to Hawthorne Heights. Hell yeah, dude. Ohio's up, dude. for lovers, dog. Yeah. Outside of your window <laughs> with my radio. Yeah, we all listen to that, dude. And yeah. then like with fucking <laughs> like and we be- we loved it. Right? Oh yeah, dude. Bless you put that. it on now. And then right after that, it was Silverstein. Like yeah, you just like discovered. Blades, no more. Like, yeah. Discovering the waterfront was a fucking masterpiece, dude. Fight uh, me. That's a good. That's a good fucking. The jam. thing is, you put that on now, you're gonna listen to one song and you're like, I'm that's over what it. I do. Like on my Spotify, like I have like two silver, like three silver scene songs, like a couple Bayside songs, a Hawthorne, I, like a couple Hawthorne. You but discover new music, you discover new comics, and you, you grow as a person. Uh, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean like I love Jim Gaffigan. I just don't watch a lot of his work anymore. Yeah. It's just it's something that like I over listened to it when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. When I first found YouTube, I was the same way with Gabriel Iglesias. I kind of. Like I thought Gabriel YouTube Iglesias. was a platform to watch comics. I didn't know. Like when I first found YouTube, only thing I looked up was Jim Gaffigan, uh, Dan yeah, Cook, and Stephen specials. Lynch. That was it. I didn't. I didn't even know the other, like ninety nine point nine percent of YouTube. 
that existed. I literally thought it was for music videos and cat videos and <laughs> and uh, and stand up. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. You could like if TRL played something, I could find it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. If uh, Comedy Central played a stand up set, I could find some of that guy's stand up set on YouTube. And that's the only like that's pretty much still the, the way I use it. Yeah, man, I, I like to look up conspiracies like, if I'm bored. I'm a super nerd, so like when I get on YouTube, um, I I listen to like comic book videos like a lot. Like I don't know, like there's this guy. Uh, if you're a, if you're a comic book nerd, by the way, check this guy out. Uh, it's uh, his channel's called Comic Storian, and he takes like he basically reads the comic for you and then he does like dramatic like uh narrations to it and he basically just brings it to you like how he says it is isn't digestible by it's like so like if you don't want to go to the comic store but you want to know like the dc bat metal shit like he's got literally a two-hour video where he does every comic narrates it breaks it down and shit and uh yeah so if you're a comic book nerd and you and if you're a comic book nerd you probably already watch it but comic story and that shit kills bro see uh Man, and I'm getting back into it, man. I'm starting to love it a lot. Magic the Gathering. Dude. Oh man, I heard it's taking you over. Uh, uh, that's another like it's yes, like, the, the internet was a big deal of like me not being able to do as many podcasts. Cool heroin. Well, like, no, uh, the way I used it, it was it was I thought it was pretty fucking ingenious, man. I decided I was like, all right, um, I can't stop drinking every single fucking night of the week. Like, and I it's not like I don't even enjoy it anymore. I pretty much sit just down routine w- at that point. and watch TV. Yeah, just watch TV, and uh, I can't find this website. Um, and just drink beer. That that was pretty much my whole. That's all I did. And so I got bored with that and decided, fuck it, I'll play Magic. I used to do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, I used to be big on Magic. Well, I started. It was pretty dope. Like I got my girlfriend into it. She actually works at uh, a game store here in town, who I'll be plugging here in a minute anyway. They're one of the sponsors now. Oh, um, nice. But, yeah, I uh, got real into it, but it was taking up so much of my time. It was like, you know when you get into something new, like you really get into it? Like oh, yeah, you, it's, like, like, it's like when you like get a new girlfriend. Or you find like, like, or find like a new video game, or yeah. like maybe you, maybe you really get into bicycles, or something like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like... Um, you fall into something real A hard. good example is when I first got into, like, upgrading my studio a, a lot. Oh, yeah. I got really into microphones. I started, like, like half my – most of my days that I wasn't doing, like, work or hanging out with somebody. Yeah. If I wasn't talking about microphones, I was looking up information on them, going to Amazon and price checking watching and, and watching videos. YouTube. So, yeah. like, I yeah. So, now, you, like, I've been watching a lot of Magic the Gathering YouTube videos. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. Like, it helped me fucking stop drinking. Like, like I didn't have to go to AA. Dude, I shout have, out to Magic. Yeah, like, dude. Who needs AA, bro? Nerd we need a blue-eyed dragon. Uh, if you want to stop drinking, you don't need the Lord. <laughs> fucking buy a comic. Spend the, like, eat a bunch of food. That's what you got to do first. Before, yeah. like, the, but, like as soon as, as soon as you're like, I want a beer. Instead of being like, I want a beer. Stuff your fucking face. Yeah, because you're going to be so full, you're like, oh. Cook a whole box of macaroni, eat that <laughs> shit. Eat all of it. You're not going to want a beer. You're going to be too full. It's not going to sound appealing. And then do dumb shit. Play a game. Uh, play magic. Read a comic book. Whatever it is, do do something that you used to do all the time that you just don't do anymore. See, I need to take that because I need to slow down on my shit. I'm not going to lie. But... It's that. It, dude, I, I don't know if it works for everybody, but it fucking worked for me. Yeah. Like, I don't even, I don't even really, there's the, that was another thing at the Tease Bar show. Yeah. I was kind of bummed to be there because I didn't want to be drinking. Yeah. I was like, ah, man, like, I, and like, I know I'm going to drink if I go on stage. So, like, that's something I'm going to have to work on. I'm going to have to get excited to go out versus, because I still look at it like. Right. Fuck, I'm just going to go out again. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to get super baked and then like try to enjoy life for a second. That was my – my goal was to become a stoner again. Like to not be a – not yeah. drink every fucking night. Like not look at like, well, I'm an, like, I'm an alcoholic who also smokes on top of that. Like I want – fuck that, dude. I want to be yeah. a stoner. One or the sp- other. Yeah. yeah. And stoner is way more healthy. <laughs> and it's way more fun. Yeah. And you don't get in as many car wrecks. You don't get in, <laughs> dude. I saw a gnarly fucking car I wreck. I fucking saw that video, dude. That is nuts. Dude. Yeah, it was fucking crazy, and it was weird. I got up to take my router back to Suddenlink, so I was up earlier than normal. Drop my girl off at work. Go to Suddenlink. I'm on the highway, dude. I'm in the far left lane, right next to the wall, and uh, there's a car in front of me, and then there's a semi in the middle lane, and there's a car in front of him, like uh, in front of the guy in front of me. Yeah. And uh, so the the semi starts to come into his lane, like oh the semi's in the in the right lane, far right. Mm-hmm. So this car's in the middle lane. 
Uh, semi kind of comes into his lane. He uh, gets out of the way. Semi overcorrects, and in my head, I'm like, "Oh, dude, that that was crazy. We just avoided a crazy wreck." And then a fucking gray Toyota comes spinning out from in front of the semi. Oh shit! He had clipped him, and then they they fucking spin, hit the wall, barely missed that car that that dude almost hit, and the car in front of me slides to a stop. I stop. We throw on our hazards. I get out. It's just like little like two three year old black girl and her granddad dude. Oh. He's all shooken up. She's screaming. We think she's hurt. We get her out of the car seat. I take her, and I'm just like, you're good, you're good. She finally calms down. Dude, she's gripping onto me, like, for, like, dear life. She's fucking terrified. And, like, I don't I don't know how to handle kids. I'm not, like, like I don't, my friends don't even bring their kids around. Yeah, like, they're kids, like, dude, You I'm say awkward. fuck way too much. I'm, I'm awkward around kids, too, except for my niece and nephew, because they're just used to it. Yeah, but, like, I, I cuss way too much. Like, my friends yeah. are, like. We're not we, kid friendly. I'm, like, a. we're going to get a babysitter yeah. to hang out. Like, yeah, even if you're coming to my we're place. We're rated R around children. You don't want us around. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, like, I'm helping her. They get the, uh, the granddad can't get out of the driver's side, so he has to crawl over through the passenger seat. And, like, the cops, it was just fucking crazy. And, of course, the semi, the guy driving the semi is trying to talk his way out of it. Yeah. Uh, really, like, what happened was he didn't, like, the guy getting on the highway, mm-hmm. the semi could have hit his brakes and let him on. But instead, being a being... douchebag driver yeah. was like, you'll hit your brakes, blah, 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 blah. And it caused a fucking wreck. Like, yeah. like being selfish while driving is one of the most dangerous things I've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, dude. It goes like and alcohol, it, and then being a dick, selfish, like no smiling, and then like, oh, cool. dude, it happened in it happened in like three seconds. Like, yeah, that fucking fast. The, the, and it sounds like like a total that like poor a man's cut car. Scene, like a cut scene from Fast and the Furious. Like that's crazy, man. Yeah, dude, it happened. And like I'm, the weirdest part was I never get coffee. I'm not a coffee guy. Um, I had passed I'm not a, even. I passed a roasters and was like, fuck it, dude. Turned around, went to the roasters. Got a fucking like iced caramel macchiato, like something like that. Right? I always get cold coffee. Too. I like cold coffee, um, and I'm driving, drinking it, listening to music, thinking how good today was, and then that wreck happened. And like, had I just gone home, I just I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have even seen it. I yeah. wouldn't have been there to help. I don't like no okay. one else stopped. Well, not only that, but like, like you, that little girl probably thought you were Jesus for like. Eight That's what seconds. I told her granddad. I was like, dude, she probably thought she just got picked up by the Lord, like. <laughs> Which at that uh, time, but at that time, well, as I went to leave, I went to say bye to him. I was like, Mm -hmm. all right, man, I'll see you guys later. She like reached out to hug me and like I picked her up again. And Mm -hmm. she was like, she wants you to stay, ha ha, laughing. I was like, it's only because it looked like Jesus, man. And I gave her back. I was like, I don't want to fucking hold your kid anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I've done my duty. It was crazy, man. But dude, imagine like what what would happen if like that guy was like, say he was like, like super religious and he like goes to church the next day. He's like, dudes. Dude, yeah. Like, I might be so, like, I'm not the Jesus only one telling the story. drives that's, a Kia. Okay? That's the craziest part. I'm not the only one telling the story. Yeah. You know, people are going to be like, I saw all this on the side of the road. Yeah, and people like, are going to be like, like, that guy had to tell his wife, like, I just ran a fucking car off the road into a wall. And then that guy had to call and be like, yo, our car's totaled, sweetheart. No, that, Sorry. The, the dr- the then call, call the mom of the kid and go, yo, so you know, we were in a car accident. Your kid's okay. Like, everyone's telling the story. There's, oh, yeah. No. I'm not the only one. I'm just the only it's one like with just, a platform oh, that's going to like, reach yeah. a bunch of people. But, yeah, it was nuts, man. I mean, I just, like, that would be weird if I like, had a conversation. He's like, y'all, all right, that big car record guy this week. Jesus drives a Kia, dude. Like yeah. I don't know, it's like and like he gives great hugs. He's, he's uh, believe it or not, he was listening to Pac. Yeah, was, yeah. So a, they're homies. Yeah, You're right. I think he. Cool. I, this is the first time ever. I'm like, he actually may have. Be, he might be dead. He yeah, he might be dead. And I'm pretty sure he was a lord because he uh, he was definitely not drinking Starbucks though. He's all about roasters, you know. Yeah, <laughs> dude. That would keeping been, it local. That, that'd have been so funny if like there's like a photo of me. Like holding that kid with like a Starbucks cup on yeah. the side of the road, like I just turned the whole franchise around. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, because they need some PR work in the uh, in the uh, minority department after that little debacle they had. That shit's funny. I was like, dude, I've seen like two black people in Starbucks ever. But uh, real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and do our sponsors. Uh, we actually have some sponsors for you guys. Oh, so, dude, uh, big leagues. Uh, first, first one up is uh, Recycled Entertainment here in Amarillo, Texas. Man, if you are a Magic the Gathering player, or you like to collect old video games, maybe you're even into some new games and you want to see if you can grab them a little cheaper. Why not, dude? Go local. Why go to GameStop? Whenever yeah, you can go to sure. Recycled Entertainment, and they actually have the largest selection of singles and Magic cards that you can find in Amarillo. Probably in any, any like I've been to some of the other stores around here, like. 
you know, Lubbock and all that, mm-hmm. like their selection's huge. Hell yeah. So if you're looking for a single card, more than likely they're going to have it, if not multiple copies and maybe even a foil copy. They have a really easy system to use where you can go in and look up each card that you want on the computer, type in the name, click the quantity that you want, send it over to them. They go pick them out and meet you at the register. It's a dope place, That man. is dope. Um, yeah, make sure to go in there. Uh, make sure to catch pre- uh, pre-releases there. They even hold Friday Night Magic. So every Friday night, what you up? can go do Friday Night Magic. Convene with the nerds. Uh, yeah, man. The biggest game store in Amarillo. Make sure to go show them some love. And if you go in there, make sure to mention that you heard about them on the Weekly Relapse podcast or anything underneath the Yellow City Comedy umbrella. And that'll be a big favor for both of us, man. And then our second sponsor is actually a t-shirt production. It's like a it's a clothing company. You can get clothing printed through these guys. Um, it's called NoThirdLane.com. Go check them out. If you're if you're like this, is what I think is cool, man. Like if you're a band and you need to get you want to get merchandise, like this is what I'm gonna use them for is merchandise. Like I'm a comic, I need merch, and they can help you make merch. They can do stickers, t-shirts. Um, uh, sweaters like the fucking hoodies shit like that oh see that's uh, no third lane dot com is like and I think the the cool part is what I'm thinking of is for merch I think the real thing right here because they're they're doing it for a community thing it's it's to help out and like uh, I'm gonna get to that here in a minute but 10 percent of every pr- uh, purchase supports scholarships in Texas students that embody the n three l message in helping others so basically what they're saying is every 10 percent of every purchase goes to help uh Help scholarships for, yeah, for Texas students in college and stuff like that. Tuition's ridiculous. But, you need all the help. So you get, you know? it's it's cool for a merch and shit like that. But I think we're yeah. we're, we're really going to be able to help out is if you're yeah. a local business and you need Hell t-shirts. Yeah. Go to these guys. Not only are you going to be able to get t-shirts at a better price than a normal competitor, you're also going to be getting a 10% kickback into the community, which is dope. Which we need all the week, you know? And then if you want to save even a little bit more money, whenever you go to nothirdlane.com, whenever you go to checkout, make sure to enter promo code YCC to save even a little bit more on your purchase with them. Heck yeah. So, yeah, nothirdlane.com and recycled entertainment and we have a few more sponsors on the horizon and we're just working out small details with them I'm you guys you. make sure to go check them out and like awesome. uh another thing about recycled entertainment.com if you want to look before you drive all the way across town for a single card you can go to recycled entertainment.com type in the name of the card that you're looking for and if they have two or more copies it'll show up as a one copy in store that way they don't they always use, have that, one that way they have at least two yeah you know what i mean so if they have th- basically if they have three copies um, it'll show online that they have them in store. That way, they, that they do that as, out of respect for the customer. That way, you don't put like if they say they have one in store, mm-hmm. you put it down for your online order, and then on your drive there, I go in and I buy that card. So yeah, so you it's a way. It. It's, it's a yeah. So you um, not only you can call them and ask if they have it in stock, but it, the best way to go about it is to go online at recycledentertainment.com, and you can go through all their Magic cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, anything that they do there. They have. Games for every single console console in existence that I'm pretty sure. Of, That's man. great. I'm I'm sure if you're trying to get Virtual Boy games, if they don't have them, they can find them. I'm kind of scared to walk in there because I'm pretty sure I just spend like a whole day in there. I spend too much money there. I spend <laughs> way too much money. You're like I'm putting somebody's kid through college. Friday like, Night yeah. Magic. Uh, this is dope. But yeah, shout out to Recycled Entertainment. Shout out to and Recycled Entertainment. No Third Lane dot com. Like that's dope, though. Like yeah, so we're hopefully we're gonna be getting some merchandise. I'm trying to. Th- I'm I'm genuinely thinking about making those. Uh, Make Amarillo laugh again shirts. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be funny. <laughs> Hell yeah. I just know people will buy them. That's, uh, that's, I'm also thinking about doing, because we're, we're, we're trying to get the money to get shirts and merch and everything like that for shows. Definitely. Um, I'm thinking about doing a, like a GoFundMe that if you donate at least $20 that you're guaranteed one of the prints. Hell yeah. The shirts. That would work. People have shirts. So, yeah. Just get at me if you guys are interested in anything like that, or if you're interested in having your business or anything like that sponsored, make sure to hit me up, man. Like I'm down to work with anybody who's local. Just I'm, I just I, I want to keep it local. Yeah, and like, keep it local, man. Here's the dopest part: as I don't ask for money. Like I, 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 if if we can't come to an agreement, money will always work. But I'd like to do a trade. Yeah. Like, how can you help me out, and I can help you out? Exactly. That way, barter system. That way, you're not having to fucking sink dollar bills in anything. And I'm not having a, you know what I mean? Like there's pay no, out the nose like, for shit. Like yeah, like you, what do you do? You wash cars? You detail cars? You want a shout out, dude? Hit me up. What you can detail my car once every couple months, and I'll and we'll do a fucking contract six months. Yeah. Shout out every I do podcasts like. Okay, the last month's not a great example, but yeah, up to five times a week. You know what I mean? So we're gonna be kicking, we're kicking ass, man. Yellow City Comedy's doing big shit. 
Yeah, I need to see if uh, my restaurant, my restaurant would uh, like to jump in on that. Hell that'd yeah, be, that'd be Fe- pretty dope. Feed me once a month. Hell yeah, <laughs> I can definitely do that. Hell yeah, especially on those all those. I follow you on Instagram, dude. You be posting. Oh yeah, it pisses me off, dude. I'll be cooking ramen noodles. <laughs> like, oh, I'm gonna jump on Instagram real quick, and then I see like a fucking elk burger with like shark on it it's like what are you how are you even getting this you're like we have we have legit unicorn steaks today yeah we no, have unicorn no. steaks and uh we actually slaughter them in front of you so you can see the rainbow is the, the blood is in fact rainbow yeah yeah we're doing a harry potter uh chef table theme so yeah, yeah like uh we actually slaughter hobbits and for yeah. fun and then we we have hobbit steaks and yeah Hobbit, and they're actually pickled hobbit toes. Yeah, and the hors d'oeuvres are actually served by the hobbits without so, their toes. Without their toes, it's going to be a great time, you know. Um, we can't say yeah, the name of the place now because like, it seems like it's yeah, all about suffering. Yeah, they're all like, I don't know what. Like, happens does he work in place. medieval times? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dude, that would make medieval times way cooler. Dude, I would love to go to medieval Fuck, times. Dude, my man. family went to I, medieval times. All right, I would love to go check that out. So, I want to go in costume. So okay, let, like so the. Let me give you the lay of the land of medieval times as what I've been told per my family. Basically, it's a renaissance fair with overpriced food, but it's funny as shit. My brother said he walked in there, got drunk, and like he was like watching people get the shit kicked out of him. This is just fucking great. He's like, I'm laughing the whole time. Like these guys are legitimately knocking each other off horses and shit. It's dope. Like my oh, my, my my niece became the prince. She she got like a princess thing. Like because like those knights walk around and like throw roses out. Yeah. Like and uh like he wasn't throwing a rose to Emma and Emma was getting like my niece, she was getting like super like she's a chick, so she's gonna get like like a little girl and she wants to be like like the whole the whole reason why they went there is for my niece and nephew, well and kind yeah, of my yeah, brother. Yeah. Mostly my brother, but um so they go there and like the whole time like dudes like ignore my niece. My dad or my brother's getting kinda of p- fucking pissed off. And so at the very end of it, like, they knight one girl in their section. Because there's, like, four sections. Yeah. And, like, your section is, like, your knight. Like, they're all color-coded. There's, like, blue, yellow, green, red, all that shit. And, like, your knight, it, at the end of the show, they nominate, like, one girl in the crowd, usually a little girl, like, to be the princess or, like, the queen of the of the jousting yeah, I'm match catching with the throne, brother. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Sorry. I'm a little, little stoned. Um, <coughs> but so she got the princess thing fucking lost it like my brother said she was running up and down the aisle like people were like giving her high fives and shit it was like the greatest moment of her life dude i wish i had a plan more for halloween because you telling that story i just really want to get in costume i want to get like a like a theatric like a lifelike pirate costume like like looks real Dope. just so i can wear it in like july and like run into a random place and be like what year is it you know what i mean <laughs> and then <laughs> like me and then, like four minutes later you run in in like a different fucking era costume i was running like a benjamin franklin style shit yeah yeah but like do like be like <laughs> yeah be like is the yeah. revolution over like what yeah everyone just keeps coming in kind of freaking out and like looking at matt, cell phones matt comes shit. in as a viking like where's the mead yeah like <laughs> <laughs> Where beest thou winches? He's, he's gonna talk like he's all, duh. <laughs> uh, then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout uh, out to Matt Viegas. I hope we love I'm, you, buddy. I'm supposed to be doing Clemente's corner sometime this week. Oh yeah, I need to jump on that at some point. I feel like such a dick because I haven't done it. You haven't done it? I've never been on his podcast, and it's it, it. Whenever he was inviting me a lot. It just never lined up. Yeah. And then other times, like lately, it's been magic and video games, so I can't wait. I'm an asshole, okay. essentially. You know what I mean? It's like, ever since I quit drinking, dude, it's like I, I can't hold my att- – I have no attention span. That is – yeah. that's Your brain's kind of like reworking itself. Dude, no attention span whatsoever. And then da- days will feel like days that used to exist. It's so weird, man. Being Dude, like, the, like – and honestly, it's weird. Like, like I've watched documentaries on that kind of shit. Like – how drugs affect the way your brain perceives time. And there's, like, a whole study on this shit. And I watched a documentary on it, and it's so weird. Like, how the human brain, we think, like, time is, like, this... Like, most people think that time's, like, the straight-line thing. And it's fucking not. Because your mind... Time is in your mind. It's a man-made construct, really. Like, the universe gives no fuck about time. Like, time is just something we use to try to fucking make sense of, like... The way reality moves around us, basically. Yeah. And, like, the way, like, it's just, like, if you do, like, a crap, to, like, if you do lean or something like that. Like, I know a bunch of dudes who do lean. They're like, Luke, seriously, dude, I thought I was on the couch for two hours. It was, like, 12 hours. Like, the way, like, just drugs can, like, change the perception of time in your brain just makes me realize, like, the fragility 
of like the human brain sometimes like how easily influenced it really is that's what i was saying like like my, like the, my favorite part of magic is the puzzles like of finding combinations and and trying to build a deck that works so fucking good that people don't want to play against it and shit like that you know what i mean yeah and forcing my brain to do those things was way more fun than like it's almost like i would much rather do math problems right now than actually drink like, yeah at, at, at home it's just one of those things. I was doing it every night at my house, like alone, basically. Me, and my girlfriend, and my dogs. Right, and oh, people I'm, would come through. But yeah, I've had spells. Yeah, hang out. Yeah. But essentially, like, like I'm not drinking to, to have a good time. Yeah, I was just drinking to drink, which was it's, if that's what you do, and you don't don't if you do, if it doesn't bug you, that's fine. Yeah. Like it didn't bug me for a long time. It wasn't until I started feeling like shit all the time. I was getting a, like I was gaining a lot of weight. Um, I had no motivation to do anything. And, like, I found myself, like, not doing – I always wasn't doing shit. And, like, early in the day, I'd catch myself thinking about beer. And then if I went on a bike ride, like, part of the motivation of the bike ride was being able to have a beer later and not feel as guilty about it. Right. I worked out. And that was, like – I was, like, that's a trap, dude. That's a fucking trap. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, catch so, yourself in a loop. So, like, it, it the first three days were hard for sure. Yeah. But after that, it wasn't, it wasn't that big of a see, deal. See, I need man. to do that. I need to take, like, a three-day sabbatical and, like, see – Cause honestly, like I'll I'll take like two days off, and I'm like, man, I'm motivated. Like the house is clean, I got all this shit done. And for some reason, man, like I have a problem with saying no. Like when it comes to alcohol, it's really hard. Like there's some days where it's real easy for me, and then there's some days where like the first thing I want to do when I get off work is go to Leftwoods and have a beer. Like that's right. The, it's like and my then, first dude, reaction. And see, whenever I get that feeling, what I have to do is I just go to the grocery store, find something that I think looks really delicious. That's it. So instead of spending money on beer. Like buy some good, like you buy food, and buy, then I and then I'd buy a, a like a magic booster, and then like a magic booster pack, and then I'd go home, open the booster, buy cooked, and was like, oh, like now you have something to show for your money at least. The next day, I can look, yeah. in, I can look at my binder if it was a cool card, and be like, oh, I, I know I'm not playing, but it's like I have a like we pulled, uh, I've been buying like there's this new set, the core set came out, it's called M, it's like uh, M19. Oh right? yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a there's a card in there. It's like the case pull. It's the one that you like everybody wants. It's like a thirty three dollar card, not foil. Holy like, shit! Like if it is foil, it's eighty. And uh, yeah, we we like Brett pulled it out of a pack one day, and that was so much more satisfying than like a twelve pack in the fridge. And then also feeling like shit tomorrow. You know what I mean? And yeah. then like and then have like that's another thing. I don't eat breakfast anymore. Like I used to have to eat as soon as yeah, I woke yeah, up. You I had soak to soak that shit up. Yeah, I had to. Like I yeah. felt like dog shit until I ate. Uh, dude, I'll go until six p.m. at night if I like. You're like, oh, I shit, might get I hungry. I might snack on something. Yeah. You know, but that's a, that that is a dangerous thing though. Is I, I'm eating a lot more sweets, mm. like a lot more, like a fucking dramatic amount more. See, I'm like, and I'm not a sweets person. Like, I'm dude, one I'm those, not either. I'm one of those people that like, if it comes down to candy or Look beef at that. jerky, I bought the extra large box of hot tamales. Hey, now I can get behind hot tamales. Those things are dope. Dude, I they were my they were my fireball. That's my mom's favorite candy. Actually, it's weird. <laughs> she like has a bowl of those like at all times somewhere. Have you know. seen that meme where it's like person walks into their mom's house like, dude, it smells like fireball in here, and like, yeah, sober people call that cinnamon. <laughs> 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 Ooh, fireball, man, dude, I can't do that. Shit. Like, fireball makes me angry. I don't know. And well, I, I just, like uh, just to wrap it up. I just I, I'm pumped that I was able to stop drinking and still drink whenever I want to. I was so scared in order for me to put down the bottle every single night. I was gonna yeah. have to be the dude that went to AA, and I it like being sober became part of me. Like it, it became part of almost every conversation. I was so worried about that. Yeah. And the only reason I'm talking about it on here is I haven't done a podcast in forever. True. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm like. While we're talking, I'm also trying to throw in, like, catch it, like, what I've been doing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, I just didn't want it to become part of my identity that, like, I had to be sober. I couldn't go to bars anymore, making it really hard to perform. I could, like, you know what I mean? I yeah. Didn't, I didn't want to be You're just like the guy. You're like me? I didn't want to have to, like, find a higher – make up a higher power, really believe in it in order to quit. I was like, if I could just stop. And it was that easy. It was really just going, like, one day, fuck it, dude. What am I doing? Yeah, I need it's to have that a, easy. I need to have a day like. But yeah, I think you have to have that thought on your own. Yeah, like you gotta definitely. be sitting in traffic or something, and it just fucking like it hits just you. Hits, and you're like, dude, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, I've, like, I've had that idea pop in my head a lot in like the last three months. I'm like, I need to like. There's no such thing as a forced epiphany. Yeah, I need to like. I really do need a slow roll. I need to go like. I want to see if I can go like a month without drinking at all. See, that's I haven't been able to do that. I went. I went 14 days 
and then I, I and then I ended up drinking at home actually. Ah. Um, I was like, fuck it. I, I went, like I, I that, that was me going. See, like I'm not quitting forever. Like I, it doesn't control me. Yeah. I can I can drink whenever I want. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, I I did the open mic at Whiskey River where they pay me in booze, and I didn't drink. You know what I mean? Nice. See, so, that's hard. Yeah, that was the hardest one, and it was like day three. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like, that's the that's like the like you're either gonna do it or you're not day. Yeah, it was fucking brutal. But I made sure to go. See, my problem is I can't. And get I kept it. a beer in the fridge, so every time I opened it, I saw it. See, I can't. Um, dude, I've like gotten to the point where I can't get past day three. That's my problem. Yeah. Because I feel so proud of myself. I'm like, fuck it, I'll go to Levelwoods and have a beer, and I know every every time what's gonna happen. Gordo's gonna buy you a shot, man. I'm I'm, I'm I'm gonna get a beer, and then I'm gonna like, all right, a beer and a shot. Maybe one more shot, and then I'm going to go home. And then that one more shot turns into two more shots, and that two more shots turns into, like, three more by, beers. The, by the end of the night, I've had five beers and, like, eight shots. And then, like, at that point, I'm just on coast mode and drunk. So I'm like, fuck it. Let's go to the taco truck, dude. Knowing I have to wake up at 10 o'clock in the fucking morning, or 9 o'clock in the morning. See, I'm work. lucky there. I, like, and I got real lucky there. Uh, I don't. I, when I do work, I only have to be there at, like, 11. You that's, know what I mean? That's like, good. Like oh I dropped my girl off at eleven and then I have like I go in at like eleven fifteen yeah so that yeah I got lucky there so anytime I did like when I was drinking all the time it wasn't like a big deal to have to wake up it's not like I have to be up at eight yeah you know what I mean dude I don't understand how people do that like wake up see <clears throat> I say I drink a lot but I'm not one of those people that need to like wake up and have a beer ooh I can't do that I've like, I, I've never been able to do that like something like, about I that think that's sickens when, me I think just the thought of it makes me want to throw up I think that's the that's the point where you're like oh shit I'm an alcoholic I felt bad for this dude I worked at a drive through man like a drive through convenience store and this dude uh, I I don't even know his name but he he was my first customer every morning we opened at seven a.m. and I would he'd be there at like six fifty eight and he would pull up and he would get two tall boy Keystone lights. And he like big red nose. You could tell he didn't like he wasn't gonna use those to get drunk. You no. knew that. Yeah. He was like a painter. He had like a painter's truck. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Clearly worked his ass off. And he'd pull up, grab his two beers, boom, boom. Like I, I, I saw he would open them while I, like while Slam I was getting them. his change, dude. Drink them. That sounds um, like my cousin. And then I'd because uh, he's a painter. Give him his change. This is an old timer. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, he's like an old cat. Like this was when I was like twenty one. Mm. And he was probably in his late fifties. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he'd drive off, and then before my shift would, before I got off, I got off at like six, or you know five, something mm-hmm. like that. Like around three thirty, four o'clock, he'd roll back through and get an eighteen or a thirty, and I'd see him every day at seven in the morning. Holy shit! Yeah, dude, it was crazy. And like I remember thinking, like, part of that, part of that sound, like it has like a romantic thing you know what i mean like part of it seems like appealing in a weird way yeah where it's like just that's your life you and you accept it it just it seems fun in its own specific way right but then uh, if but, you look at it from the outside but, in, it's but from any other angle it, you're like don't let me be that guy you're like fuck that yeah and like and that was part of it like i thought about him a lot in the last few months like i was like because i kept drinking earlier and earlier and i was like dude just like, like it's eleven thirty. I kept saying at least like I was using him as my bar. At least I'm not that guy. And then right. like but I realized how fucking close that bar was getting, dude. And I was like, oh shit, like I gotta I gotta be careful. See, and I have those people around me, like because <laughs> I work at Leftwood, so and I work I see drunks all day. That's the thing, dude. Being sober around drunks is one of the most boring things on the planet. Like yeah, being you're just not drunks, there. but around drunk people. Yeah. Cause you're but, just basically sitting there. But go ahead, you work at Leftwoods. Oh yeah. So I work at Leftwoods, and dude, and I see, I've seen every type of drunk. I've seen casual drunk. I've seen hit the bar right at 3 o'clock, slam three drinks, leave for two hours, come back, and just end the night out. And you see those people, same people, all the time. And, like, I I, I am that guy. Like, I like yeah. easily, can, like, some days of the week, for sure, I'm that guy. Showing up, drinking, to the, you know what I mean? Yeah. We can all be that person. Easily. We've we've been you've probably been that person in the last oh, two dude. weeks. Yeah, no, I need to like seriously, I think after today I'm I'm gonna chill out for about a week and see if I can do that. If I can get past it's that three day mark, man. I lost I have lost seventeen pounds. And like I said, I've been eating way more. Dude, uh, you know what's crazy? I've gained a little bit of weight. I'm only, it's like five pounds. And I know this sounds like fucking very petty, but I'm not that tall of a dude. 
So five pounds on me, you can fucking tell. Oh, dude, yeah, five pounds on me, you can tell. Like, in the like the problem is, is like when I move a certain way and something else moves that didn't move like a couple weeks before, I'm all like, oh shit, that was that fucking sweet and spicy burger I had the other day. Oh god, damn it. Yeah. And the worst part is like now I'm around a bunch of people and they always have dab pins and shit. So I'm like, hey, let me get your dab pin. Two dabs. I'm like a fat kid at a cupcake convention anytime I'm around food. Like I've been eating like a motherfucker. Dude, I've been buying so much snacks. Like so much re- snacks. Like, like let me tell you what I you Dude, here's the thing. I'm waking up now because like I, I feel like my body's trying to replace like I don't know what it is. I wake up two hours every I go to bed, I wake up two hours later and I eat. Oh dude, I've woken up in the middle of the night, ate a sandwich and went back to sleep. Dude, last night I ate some applesauce, some beans that we had cooked for bean burritos. Mm-hmm. I warmed some of those. So I ate applesauce while the beans warmed up. Nice. Ate the beans, and then I went back for the rest of the applesauce, and then I poured a glass of tea, and I drank that while eating hot tamales while I was smoking a cigarette right before I laid back down. Like, that was at 4.45 this morning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, that's not healthy, bro. No, it's not. Like, okay, let me tell you how bad mine's gotten. So before I got home the other night, me and my buddy were in his car. He was taking me home. And we were hitting this dab pin like it was an oxygen mass, and we were trapped underwater. Like like the plane's going down, and that's the only thing that's going to save you? Just, just, I know this thing was running every bit of like 1,200 Kelvin and how hot it was getting because we were just mashing this shit. I get home. I was like, Rockstar Pizza's down the street. They're open, right? Let me try them out. So I order a large, like, pepperoni and Canadian bacon. Like a large pepperoni Canadian bacon. And then uh, a barbecue chicken pizza and then, like, a chicken sandwich. I eat half the chicken sandwich, the whole barbecue chicken pizza, one-third of the uh, the big pizza I ordered. And then two hours later, made a sandwich, a triple-layer sandwich. But you didn't go to bed in between these. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, yeah. Oh, no, I, no. I bust a fat munch. I, oh. I ate, like, five popsicles last night, dude. I, I, that same night, I woke up three hours later after I was sleeping and ate two packages of ramen noodles and went back to sleep. I was like, I'm a fat piece of shit, man. Dude, yeah. It, it, I remember when I was younger, like – older male adults because i've always been a real skinny dude like i was like i was that kid that had a six-pack without trying you know what i mean like I'd, not like that it looked like i was shredded right. you could just tell i had a six-pack because i was so fucking skinny right you could eat like 15 gogurts and it would do nothing to you like that kind of shit yeah and the uh, so i remember like bragging about like oh i have a high metabolism and like my stepdad at the time going uh it'll catch up with you one day like probably like around 24 25 and i was like bullshit dude 24 25 dog no bullshit. Mm-hmm. That's when it hit me, too. I already did four miles on my bike today, and I'll probably go on another bike ride just because I'm excited that my body is naturally losing weight. So, so you I, help it out? Like if I, It's probably on me to keep it going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like At some point, I'm going to plateau and stop. And I think if I can just like if I can lose all the fat and maybe put a little bit. Like, but I'm riding a bike. I'm only going to work out my legs. Yeah, see, I'm, I turned 29 this year, so I'm staring like 30 right in the balls right now. Like I turned 29 in February. It's coming, man. It's coming whether we like it or not. But see, like, I'm not so scared of 30 now than when I was when I was like 23 or 24. I'm like, 30. It's because we're almost here. Yeah, I'll let future Val take care of that shit. He's fine. He's cool. And then now I'm at 29. I'm like, oh. I'm future Val. Yeah. Fuck. Your mindset never changes, dude. Like, like I'm I'm working on a joke right now where it's like I I know I'm not. Like, here's another another great example of how I know I'm not an adult yet. Like I'm a, I'm an adult, but I'm not grown up. Yeah. Is uh I'll do some dumb shit, and then as soon as I do, I'm like, oh fuck, adults are coming, and then I'm like, oh wait, I'm older than them. Like you know what I mean? Like I can just walk away. Yeah. Like, like, like I am the adult. Yeah. I'm now. like I'm the I'm the adult out of most situations at this point. Like you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you always, like, like if you go to, like, church camp or something, you see that counselor, that one that, like, everyone's, like, real cool. He's, like, 28, 29. You're, like, that guy's cool. He's a real adult. And then now I'm 28, 29. I'm, like, we're dumb. Like, we're just as lost at 28, 29 as, as we were when we were, like, 22, 23. Oh, easily. Like, easily. I've learned nothing. You know what I've learned? <laughs> I've learned how to like, be a dick better. That's true. Um, How to, like, maybe, like, I know for I know now if I call – Certain operators, and they're like, are you an existing customer? Say no. You'll get a fucking person right away, and they'll transfer you to the right person. It's yeah. Just, don't tell them, yeah, I have, a, I have an account with you, because they're like, all right, what's your account? No. Like, they, you go through a robot for 45 minutes. Just say no. I've learned that, but say I've learned no. nothing of value or substance, really. No. 
like nothing that I think. I mean, I've learned a lot. Like I'm, I'm, I'm belittling it, but for sure, as far as like but growing really, up, yeah. yeah, I can pay bills a little better. Cause you figure like twenty eight, like when I was, when I was like twenty one, I'm like, dude, by the time I'm twenty eight, twenty nine, I'm gonna be. Dude, on whenever the road. you were eighteen, think oh. about how old and twenty eight year old was. You were like, oh shit! Like you're like they got their shit together. Yeah, they're good. They've already, they've been out of college a couple years. You remember get... saying dumb shit like, oh, when I'm their age, I'll have a Ferrari. You know oh what yeah, I mean? when I'm their dumb. age, I'll I'll have a house and I'll be on the road and like my deal was like I wanted to be a, like a famous musician. I was like, man, I'm gonna fucking kill it. I'm gonna put Emerald on the map. Now I'm at 28, 29. I'm like, fuck, man. I never thought I, dude. I've always loved comedy. Like I've ever since I was a kid, dude. I listen to stand up all the fucking time because it. Hold on. Pause. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little fucking shaken up. Like, I do not like that. Uh, for the audience, you can even hear it in my voice, dog. Uh, oh. Cop just knocked on my door. Yeah, guys, if you don't, like, the fuzz just showed Ooh. up. Holy shit. Yeah, like, and, Dude, like. this podcast just took an awkward turn. Well, what was weird is uh, I looked at the, the peephole, saw a cop, and I'm like, you know, you get worried, especially if you're not doing anything wrong. Right. You're like, what the fuck's going on? And I see a white suburban across the street with people standing outside of it. So he knocks. He's like, "Did you just have a friend leave?" And I was like, "No, no." He's like, "You really you didn't have a red car back out of this." I was like, "I've been doing a podcast for like the like last hour. To be accurate, it's been fifty minutes at this point." But yeah, yeah. I was like, "Yeah, man." I was like, "I literally just hit stop recording to talk to you." Like, I don't know which. And he's left. That's the first time. Dude, like, and by the way, you can hear the knock on the recording. I'm assuming. I'm right. assuming. Yeah, that was yeah. That's, a, that's gonna make for a crazy good podcast. By the I way, I was like, that's fucking that wasn't weird, a friend dude. knock. That's no, not how my friends knock. No, no, that was very forceful. And they're like, "Hey, motherfucker, <sighs> the fuzz is here." And there's like, there's no way it doesn't smell like pot in here. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, but you're just like, I mean, they don't really give a shit too much on that thing. Uh, as long as you're in your house, look at my fucking hand, oh, dude. Yeah, like I'm fucking shaking. I man. don't like that shit. I don't not like that shit, dude. Jesus, they're getting bold and brave in this motherfucker. Oh, dude, my neighbor has a red. I shouldn't say that on the podcast. No. Nah. Anyway. Um, well, yeah. No. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so comedy scene's going great. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I think. I think we're talking about Amarillo. You like you wanted to be a musician, put Amarillo yeah. on the spot. I think. I think comedy might be able I, to pull that off in the next year, dude. I, and honestly, like I've always listened to stand up since I was a kid. I've loved it. Like ever since I was a kid, I love listening to fucking stand up comedy because it always puts me in a good mood. Doesn't matter how. Like, pissed off I am. I can hear a good joke, and I'm okay. And I I always knew I was funny, and, like, I talked a lot. But I didn't think, like, when I was 23, that I would ever do stand-up comedy. I figured I was just going to be a musician or whatever. And now, when I look at it from my perspective at 29, stand-up comedy seems to be better geared for me than music does. Because, for me, I like the fact that, like, what you were saying in that podcast, uh... Who, the guy you had on before, uh, uh, Brett Raybould. Brett Raybould, uh, hilarious comic. You guys make like, sure to follow. Like, oh yeah, dude, dude, uh, killer. He, he has I, some I dope listen. ass T-shirts. The uh, Raybould brothers. Yeah. they look like the Mario characters. Anyway, go ahead. Um, but I never thought I'd see myself on stage, and the more I do it, man, it's just the more I love it because it's it's natural for me. It's easier for me. Like when you were saying, like when you wanted to be, I always wanted to be in the spotlight too. Like I wanted to be the guy running the shit. Like yeah. everybody's listening to me mostly and everything else is just kind of background noise. And then that's very selfish if you're like a musician, but as a comedian, that's your whole bit. Like it's just you. And if you fuck up, you ain't got nobody else to blame but yourself really. Right. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, if that, that's always a factor, but just something about doing stand up. I, it makes like when I love making people laugh, I thrive on that because it makes me kind of feel better about myself. I'm like, hey, I made somebody laugh. Yeah, well, then that's a great feeling is making, especially when you make a room of people laugh. Yeah, um, like that's that's why I hated T's bars. Show. Like I love the bar and the show went great. I didn't like my set. I bombed so fucking hard, dude. But I bombed so hard that I was bombing the next day. Dude, you were fighting a pill though on that one. Dude, that was such a fuck. Like, as soon as you got on stage, you were fighting uphill. And I started, like, I was like, fuck it, I'm just doing one-liners. <laughs> yeah, dude, just Mitch Hedberg that shit. Like, I tried, man. That was, I mean, it's definitely not the worst show I've ever had, by any means. But, like, no. yeah, so, like, when people were, like, and the people that were listening were listening, and they were responding. Dude, you, I just like, couldn't. Yeah, there was people listening. Yeah, there was, like, a, there was like three tables. You just couldn't hear laughs. I, I couldn't hear anything but people talking. Yeah. And, like, I wasn't even sure if people could hear me. And then whenever like and then I went to do my last joke and the whole bar quieted up. I was like, "Really? This is the part where y'all get quiet?" <laughs> Dicks. All right. I did my did my time. I'll see you later. And then, oh, 
I gotta go get my mic stand from there, man. Oh it's shit! It's still there. I guarantee it's probably gone now. Well, let's hope not. <sighs> if not, just hit up Maddie and get one from him. You know he's got like a billion. He had that one. one for. He had mine for like a year. I just got it back. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah I just got it back. <laughs> now we uh, dude, comedy for me now it's just like, I find more like material, like inspiration around me as a comedian than I did as a musician. Because as a musician, I had to go deep, find feelings, and, like, write on that shit. And as a comedian, dude, like, I can look around, and every day I find something I can write a joke about. Something. And see, that I'm slacking in that area, man. I really need to write more. Um, last month we had so many shows that I didn't I didn't even really think about writing. I wrote, I wrote like, two jokes. Yeah. Um, but they were, like, right before I went on stage. Like, I wrote them in my head. I didn't physically sit down and write so they probably could be better um but yeah like I, I just i haven't been writing the way that i like to the way that i would want to um writing can be hard man they can be yeah it's one of those things where you like in your head you'll be like oh i should just i'll just go i'll just work it out on stage and it's like dude that's that's it's one of the avenues you can definitely take but you know for sure in the back of your brain when you're saying it if i just sit down and write this shit right now it's going to be better than it me writing on stage and then I can continue the writing process on stage and make yeah. this bit I, I can I can make this joke twice the growth and power that it has if I just take the idea to stage mm-hmm. uh, if I actually write it down it'll it'll be a bigger better piece of material than if I just go up on stage yeah. and, and tell it there's times where like sometimes I will go off the cuff I'll be like I've been thinking of this joke but I've never I haven't fully worded it right and that's and like that's and always just, fun and it's then I'll just go and if it lands I'll be like all right I gotta remember how I did that but there's I've also noticed with the jokes that I do they get better with repetition because I find other ways to like beef it up it's like when you get like like a basic guitar track you're like all right so that's like my first like time I tell the joke, and then you're like, oh, let's add some drums to it. So you added something else to the joke, or another part, or a different end of the story, and then you're like, oh, well, I need a bass line. So then you do like me. I like to do like change my voice up and yell and like pull dynamics. It's like get quiet and then scream at him again. Yeah. And so like that's your like your bass line, and then you just build a joke up from there. And that's kind of how I f- feel like in my head. I build a joke like I would build a song. See, I, I like talking to, like m- the way I like to do the the way I like my stage presence to be anyway is I like to talk to the audience. Yeah, you're like you're like you're like the chillstone camp counselor. Yeah, I just talk to them. Yeah, like I, I, me, I just kind of you know, wait to <laughs> scream. And like I think that's where it comes really hard to write is because I have like whenever I go in that format, man, it's it's, it's, it's sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's harder mm-hmm. um, to make a joke work. Because, like, I'm just talking. Like, there's really, like, it has to, like, I don't, a setup, setup and then punch is real hard for me. Um, But telling a story and then, and then making that funny Mm -hmm. is, is. You're a storyteller. You're a good one, too. It's where I, it's where I feel comfortable. Yeah. Like, your uh, joke when, about the dog that you, the gluten-free dog. God, I love that joke so much. It's one of my favorites. (laughs) That's, that's probably, like, up there in my top two favorite of your jokes. Like, dude. The gluten-free dog fucking killed me, bro. First time I heard it, I lost it. Like, I almost fell out of my chair. Like, I was laughing that fucking hard. I was like... I tried I tried the uh, skydiving joke at T's. Oh, yeah. That, that's the one where you got the you got the sweet hard hat. Yeah, from the 806. Yeah, that was a fun... Were you there for that? No, I was not there for that. I was, like, sick or something that night. I that was a... I, 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 that's the thing, is you have these jokes that you tell that you'll love forever. You know what I mean? And that skydiving one's one of those. It's just like, even if I don't enjoy saying it out loud anymore, mm-hmm. when I, I remember writing that joke. I'll never forget writing that joke. It was like one of those ones where it was like, I, I was writing it and I knew that while I was writing that this, that this was going to be a joke that I kept with me. That I, I, I didn't even, I didn't even need it to, to go on stage to know it was going to work. I yeah. knew it would work. Like I knew without a doubt. It was like one of those things. You're just like, this <clears> one, <throat> this is like my, uh, Ace in the hole. I just yeah, like and like writing. Whenever you're writing something like that, and you know it's gonna work, dude, that's the greatest feeling. And then it may not work forever. Like I remember having that one with my alcohol poisoning joke, and that one's hit or miss. But it crushed for the first three months that I did it. You know what I mean? Like when I was workshopping it and getting it. Um, it's just I I think it's one that that's one that if you've heard before, it's really hard to laugh at because yeah. you, you, the yeah. spin you already know the spin on it. My ace in the hole is the singing joke that I have. 
Like that's my eighth note. Like that night at um, the eight oh six. You did for real singing. <laughs> like when I did for real singing, because I know like they're like like that's like a funny like joke amongst comedians. Like don't ever real sing. Well, I will. Says I don't give a well, shit. Well, no, I think I just saw Chris D'Elia say it one time. Yeah, and uh, but um, I'll put that joke like because that night at the eight oh six, which I was kind of drunk and I shouldn't have started out with a vegan joke. Because, I mean, <laughs> not the good target audience you're going for. Like, if I was in a bar full of rednecks, that joke would have killed. But it's, like, a bunch of beanie, like, arcade fire listening to kids, like, that, like, don't even really remember most of Obama's, like, term. Like, like that young. They're, like, 14, 15 coffee addicts that walk in there and they have an opinion about everything. <laughs> Everyone's already get, offended. Don't, yeah, and don't get me wrong. Like, I love you kids. You're 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 our future, but dude, stop getting so fucking mad about dumb shit that you can't control. Right. Like honestly, and I'm gonna give you a lesson here, kids. If you're listening to this, uh, by the time you're our age, as long as it doesn't affect your taxes, you really don't give a shit anymore. That's actually true. <laughs> like as long as my taxes don't go up, I don't give a fuck, dude. Dude, uh, I don't know if you heard this sick, this sick, sick rap, dude. This one. Of course I'm on tour. Oh, yeah. I'm driving a Porsche over the floorboards, over the f- four points, while you're in the four tours, getting the Porsche and the divorce. <laughs> the same Porsche. time to hear it's affording. Look what I'm planning, planning. I'm planning to do all this while you're panicking, and you're looking and staring at mannequins, and I'm going to <laughs> panicking, trying to get up a planikins. <laughs> all of the planikins, panicking, pan, pan, panikins. Well, all the panikins, panicking, and in the cabana. <laughs> I'm in, a cab- I'm in a cabana and a chant I'm in a cabana chant and all the stand up banner. Well, you don't got the stamina, you're lacking the stamina. Lacking the stamina while you're divorcing Harrison Ford, and I'm in a portion of floor port. While I'm on torrent. You're using way too many napkins. Tapkins. Lapkins and chapkins. You're using chapstick and napkins while I'm papkin. Flapping around like a papkin. Flamming a baby and a pan of champkin. Damn it, a canopy. <laughs> oh, that uh, shit's so funny, dude. That oh, that made my day. My cheeks hurt. That was a good one. Bannigans, <laughs> Bannigans in a cabana. All right, man. Well, we're over an hour. I gotta get to that dinner here in like the next like twenty thirty minutes. Oh so. shit! Yeah, he gotta get the dinner. Gotta get din. to that. Gotta get, gotta get to that din din win win. Mm, Don't forget, give me no, the chicken. No third third lane dot com. Was that what it was called? Yeah, third. Uh, th- uh, yeah, third lane. I gotta make sure. I don't wanna <sighs> fuck it yeah. up. Dude, it's been a uh, and the Bannigans. And the Bannigans, a cabana with Harrison Ford and Flown Dawns. But, uh, no you guys, third lane hoodies, only $25. Yeah, when you guys listen to this, this has been a weird but very insightful and killer podcast. I like this one. This is. No third lane, the lifestyle brand made by Christopher Spring. <laughs> and the Flown and Dawns with Harrison Ford. You can use promo code YCC. You know what I mean? Mm. Also, don't forget to go shopping. Over at uh, Recycled Entertainment. I can't make it rhyme. Recycled yeah. Entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude. Uh, you guys, fucking shout out to Skylar. You're killing it, bro. I Thanks, bro. I appreciate you coming on the podcast, dude. Yeah, I appreciate you putting time in your busy schedule today for me to... You know. oh, I, I haven't done anything today. Oh, yeah, but I know you got like, dinner and <laughs> I'm stuff. Gonna, I'm going to go eat some chicken strips. Mm, shacking. Hell yeah. I'm shaking. I'm gonna do so, so many baits. So many baits. Thank you for tuning in to the weekly relapse. I'm Skyla. And I'm Tyler. I'm gonna I'll put music on the next one. Sorry. Yeah. Peace. Peace.